And we are underway here from Waterford Kettering High School in this regional final, Division Two, sorry, Division One, Region Two, between the Clarkston Wolves and the Catholic Central Shamrocks. Alongside my broadcast partners, Dan Stickrat, Rick Larson, I'm Jonathan Turner, and we're excited to bring you this regional final matchup here tonight on the NFHS Network. And now here's an opportunity far oh. post just past the goalkeeper, Jack Rogers. Cal Pearson now gets a ball across the six, oh. cleared off. And Otis here to be dangerous is... Logan Sloan oh, did a great job that. of dealing That's going to be a foul. And we're going to see our first yellow card here of the afternoon or the evening. A lot of space. Oh, look at that ball over the run. top. Look at this Larson. <laughs> Falk Pearson will bury that and give the Shamrocks a 1-0 lead. Well, isn't that just how soccer goes? You end up with a blown chance on one side and then... Other looked to put one across the top of the 18. Wister gets it back. Wister shot off the off post. The post. Hits Rogers. That was an opportunity right there. This one right goes up and met by Lars Larson. Clock is going to be stopped and a yellow card is going to be issued. If two got Hudson now bringing this up that far side, and that is going to be a yellow card. That sure looked like a yellow card foul. All put inside, and a little flick back post for Cooper. And they're going to say he was off. Offside. He Bra looked offside at the back post there. Final matchup here on Wednesday of next week in Grand Ledge. As this ball is played over, Theodore is right there. He'll get a touch, he'll take a shot! And now they're up 2-0! Lefter was the only guy tracking that cross. The Clarkson defense had a real hard time. Cuts it back, top of the 18th shot. Lays out Moscone. What a great play that way, that's a goal saving See on this near side. It puts this one far post and just passed. Wow, what a cross. I believe that was, was that? He got clipped going to the ball. I don't know if. That's shoulder to shoulder. As now Wisser uh -oh, just puts yeah. the. Get a yellow card. And compromising the ball to get blocked and things like that. You got to, you got to do better and, and get crosses in in the run of play because these corner kicks aren't. All comes in and that's a head down that's and in. that's in! Well, and there's the commentator's curse right there. I don't know who got that one. Does anyone know who got That's ball correct. back in, up goes again, and just <laughs> over. That was Connor Lamming. Slides, and this game will end with Catholic Central winning the regional final. Catholic Central's fourth regional championship in the last eight seasons. Fantastic effort by Clarkston. Uh, Definitely in the in the second half of the second half, they were all over Catholic Central. Catholic Central showed a ton of resiliency under the circumstances and was able to hold.
Talk about your uh, <laughs> regional final win and going to the final four. This is the fourth time in less than a decade that Catholic Central's been able to reach the final four. I think it's really good. I mean, we knew we probably had like the toughest road to get here. Or um, going through a really hard district every year, and then uh, Okemos. You know, we tied them earlier in the year. I mean, they're defending state champs. We knew they were going to be a really tough team, and then. Clarkson, you know, we played them twice early in the year and beat them both times. We knew, we knew Clarkson got so much better over the last couple of weeks, and I mean, to beat them again, I mean, they're such a great team, and to come out on top is just, just a great feeling. Yeah, we just gotta, you know, stick to our game plan. Coach gives us, you know, we know we're uh, hard to beat when we move the ball and less dribbling, and we try to stick to that. You guys didn't have a lot of chances second half. The only shot on frame found the back of the net, and defensively, you withstood their 11 corner kicks. Only gave up one goal. Talk about the defense. I think you guys have given up 12 goals all season. Yeah, I mean, it starts from it starts from Jack in the back. Jack's been, I mean, without a doubt, the best goalie in the state. And then, you know, um, Frank, Frank next to me. We usually we've been playing with three in the back, and you, you got Frank and you got Simon, who are just two great defenders. I mean, I wouldn't rather have any other defenders. And then also our two defensive mids, Godin goes into every tackle, and Kellen, Kellen just like helps calm down the game for us. Just receives the ball and just plays out and. So we just have so many great, like, just senior leaders and juniors in the back line and just really helps make a great team. And in general, it's just tough to beat a team when they're a unit in the back. You know, everyone communicating with each other and um, sticking together, making sure everyone's got a man, and, you know, it's tough to beat. Thoughts about Rockford. They're 21-0-1. They got one of the better sophomore goalies in the country. Their uh, best team they've ever had. Uh, an opponent that Catholic Central I don't think has ever faced in boys soccer. Your thoughts about facing up with a team that is hungry just just like CC. I mean, we're. I mean, we consider ourselves one of the best of the nation. We know we are. So I mean, every single year, no matter what what CC team we are. I mean, you know, whether it be last year, this year, ten years ago. I mean, we're always ready to take on anyone in the state. We back ourselves. No matter who play anyone in the nation, we're always going to back ourselves. So I mean, Rockford's just another team for us. Extra fitness and and early morning trainings, and and that's when I knew that we we're going to be peaking at the right time. You got five zip ups for each one you got to get in the playoffs here. Is that what's going on here? Well, <laughs> you know, I start out one, two, three, four, five, but uh, yeah, you know, you don't know what the weather's going to be like. It wasn't supposed to rain the other night and it did rain. Yeah. So I was just messing with you. But yeah. what, um, compared to the last time you guys got this far, uh, what is the difference between the two teams? Um, <laughs> the difference between the, t the two teams, you know, I think it's, it's, uh, our strengths and weaknesses in different areas of the field that you have to compensate for. And I would say that this year here, I think from the goalkeeper to our front runners, we're solid. Sometimes we get disorganized, but I mean, we give up very few goals. We move the ball through. We're not trying to beat people five, six, nothing. We just need to put one more goal than them. And that's why we, we pretty much stay on task and, uh, you know, everybody sticks with the game plan. So, I mean, I, I, to me, it's, it's, they can't hear a word I'm saying on the side. So, you know, our leadership on the field, without that, this, we don't win. Just the thoughts on the defense and especially Jack hanging in there. Just get, make sure you guys had that breathing room down the stretch. So you yeah. let one in and it wasn't the worst thing in the world. Right. I mean, um, quite honestly, you know, uh, Jack is, I think, one of the best goalkeepers in the state. He, he is the number one goalkeeper in the state to me. But I, on top of that, um, Drew Pearson is... I mean, he's a wrecking ball back there. He destroys every play that he's built up. He, uh, he's saved our bacon, I, I can't tell you how many times. And uh, I mean, he's got the heart of a line, that guy. It, and quite honestly, I've given him, this is his team, this is my team. Yeah. You know, I've uh, all year, 
he's owned it. He's been a, a leader. This is his third year now as a captain, and uh, this is his team. Jack said he and Drew kind of had a Mensa meeting to figure out how to stop Richie Ludwig today. What, what did you think about uh, how they handled that task? Um, <laughs> I think I think they outperformed my expectations. Uh, Richie is a great player. Um, I think uh, the plan that they came up with minimized his uh, effects on the game. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Can you comment on the fact that you know, when you beat them twice early in the season, they were missing a few players, including their goalie? You, I assume you expected this to be a much closer game. Yeah, this we time. knew we knew that this was going to be a way different game. I mean, listen, as you go through the season, uh, you don't know what you're going to get. But if you expect that you're going to have a, a walk in the park every every game, we'd already be sitting on our couches watching this on the live stream. So. I mean, you know, you come out here and, and it's like, hey, it's going to be a battle. We knew that they've got a score to settle. Beating, beating a team three times in one year, that's tough. That's really tough to do. I mean, they know you as well as you know them, right? And not much changed for us. They're the ones that had made all the changes to, to better themselves. We were the same team today that we were then with growth, but player-wise, we, we didn't change any players. So, I mean, we just came out here expecting that it was gonna be a battle, and it was a battle, and we were fortunate enough, we came out on top.